Shabbos daf kuf mem tes. Today's email comes to us from Akiva Leo Boaz from Flatbush. And he says he loves the achdos that we have at MDY. And he says, I want to tell you a story. When his father was younger, somebody asked him, are you Satmer? No. Are you Lubavitch? No. Are you Lutvish? No. So what are you? My father politely said, I'm Jewish. That's the achdos that we have at MDY. We're all gewaldik yidin. The Mishnah tells us that it's permitted to count how many guests you have and how many desserts you have to serve all balpeh without writing it down. But if you write it down on a piece of parchment and with ink, according to Rabibi, it's also because you might come to erase, you'll see that you have way too many guests written down, you'll get rid of some. According to Abay, it's because if you read this document, you might come to read other business-related documents that's called Shtori Hedyoitas. If a person engraved on a tablet the amount of guests, it's still also to read from it because of Shtori Hedyoitas. If you write it on a wall that's a short wall, a lower wall, the issue is you might come to erase. So where's the nafkamina between Rabbi Bivi and Abaya? The nafkamina is if you write it on a very tall wall, a high wall, you can't get to it, and you can't erase. So according to Rabbi Bivi, the issue is you might erase. And there's a concept called loy plug. Like Rabbi says, you're not allowed to read to the light of a candle on Shabbos because you might come to tilt it, even if it's 20 feet up in the air. Loy plug. That's Rabibi. But Abayu will say, there is a plug. And in fact, there's a machlekes in Rabbi himself. Do we say loy plug or we say plug? If the gzair of Chacham doesn't apply, so we don't apply it. We have a similar machlekes by a mirror. A metal mirror, the halacha is, you cannot use it on Shabbos because it has a sharp edge and you might come to give yourself a haircut. Says Rameir, but if it's on the wall and you can't take it off the wall, you won't be able to cut your hair and therefore you're permitted to use it. What about loy plug? Rameir doesn't hold about loy plug. Says the Mishnah that you're permitted to make a lottery for your children to see which one gets the greater portion. Typically, when you have adults, and they're very careful with each other, these particular adults are careful to measure and to count and to weigh, it's also for them to do so because it's like as if they're lending money on Shabbos, and according to Hillel, you might have an issue with Ribas as well. Therefore, these adults are not permitted to make a lottery. But you're allowed to make a lottery for your children even though it might be ribas, but you're teaching them hilchas ribas. At the end of the day, it's the father's money anyways, and therefore you're teaching them how ribas could hurt somebody, how it accumulates and could be devastating. Even though Koyhanim are fighters, nevertheless, when it comes to making a lottery, who gets what portion of the kachim that they have, you only make that lottery if it's something that was shechted on yantiv, but not something that was shechted erev Shabbos, erev yantiv. The Gemara tells us an amazing thing, that if you cause your friend to get punished, to be punished, by davening against your friend, he did a terrible thing to you, HaKash Baruch Hu won't allow that person in his mechitza. And the Gemara brings a pasuk, It's not good for a tzaddik to punish. The Gemara learns that that means that he caused somebody to have an oynish. The Gemara says, do not learn it out from the story of Navais that was harmed by Achav the king. Achav stole his orchard and, and by stealing it, he had to kill him. So Navais wanted to take revenge after he died and he told him, I have a great idea how to get Achav. Why don't we make the Nevi'im lie and say that Achav has to go to war and Achav will go to war and he'll die. And HaKash Baruch said, that's a great idea. Say, go out. And the Gemara understands that it's because he caused Achav to die and the Gemara says, perhaps no. Perhaps the reason HaKash Baruch said get out is because he used the lie. And do not learn it from Tzitkiah. Tzitkia was together with Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar had a terrible habit of every single day having Mishkav Zacher with one of the kings, and that day was Tzitkia's turn. And Nebuchadnezzar had a tremendous punishment. His Arla became 300 Amas. So the Gemara says it can't be that Tzitkia got punished for that because Tzitkia was a tzaddik, and what else should have he done? The Gemara tells us that Nebuchadnezzar was such a Russia that even till this very day, it's also to visit his palace, his house. Why? Because in his palace there are Shadim. And if you go into the palace, you'll chase the Shadim away. And the Pasuk says that it has to have Shadim on a daily basis. When Nebuchadnezzar came to Gehenna, everybody trembled. They thought, here he is again. He's coming to rule us. A Baskal came out and said, no, Nebuchadnezzar is just like the rest of you, Arelim, you Goyim, lay down and be like everybody else. Gemara tells us that after seven years when Nebuchadnezzar was in an animal, he came out, 
and he was stronger than before to the point that he was able to ride a male lion and used a snake as the reins of a lion. Have a wonderful day.